Welcome to the Dumb Idea Podcast with Mike and Alex. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the show. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share this video or podcast on any platform that you're listening on. Please visit us at www.dumbideapodcast.com. All right, welcome back to another show. Thank you for coming back. Hopefully you shared the last week's podcast with a neighbor or a friend. We're going to ask you to do the same thing this week. Please share with a neighbor, a friend, coworker, colleague. Uh, probably not your children, not children from the show, but uh, we're not that bad. No, no, no. I, we only throw a couple, couple, couple curse words out there. You know, yeah, I try to just say the f word instead of the actual word. Right. I mean, we're not throwing around Joe Rogan's words. You know what I mean? No, <laughs> we're not getting banned off platforms no. for just throwing around <laughs> words like that. But anyway, thank you for coming back. We appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Uh, today we're we were thinking about you now. Gas prices are kind of going through the roof. Well, not kind of. They are going through the roof. Um, I'd say what? Probably about eight, nine months ago, ten months ago, gas prices, regular on lead, it was around $3 a gallon. Mm-hmm. Now we're pushing almost over 5 Yeah. Or are we already over 5 Have you I, noticed? I haven't filled up the car. My my little, uh, my second car is running on like an eighth of a tank of gas. <laughs> but that eighth of a tank of gas is worth a ton of money right now. Right. Um, but I think the last time I was at a gas station... I want to say it said four nineteen, or 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 something, but it goes up like daily. Right. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's not had in diesel. I think I was watching a trucker YouTube channel, and I think he said diesel is almost over five dollars a gallon. Yeah, which is hurting the trucking industry a little bit. But yeah, and then of course drives the price of everything up. So because in case you, unless you live about a hundred yards from where something was made, it got to you on a truck. Yeah. So, um, I'm just I'm trying to look for see if I can see gas prices in uh in Google Maps. Probably not though. Oh. I don't know why it's it's gonna be like a town, three towns over. Oh, rather than just looking at the one right down there. <laughs> All right, so it says the the Exxon down the road four thirty, mm-hmm. Shell's four twenty five, Giants four twenty five. Four thirty two. So we're right around four thirty and change, but that's a dollar thirty a gallon more than we were seeing probably even ten months ago. Yeah. Now is that all Russia related, you think? Uh, uh I mean I think that well, the Joe Biden would like to have you think that. Um they're carefully rewording it. They're calling the the uh the Putin price spike. They're blaming it completely on on Putin, but I think that's like everything that comes out of a politician's mouth is completely disingenuous um, because there's no reason why we can't produce. Now, it's not as simple as, oh, let's just make it here, but uh, it's a supply and demand question. It really isn't that complicated. And if we have the ability to increase the supply here with our own borders and employing our own people, why don't we do that? Instead, uh, we're talking to such friendly awesome places as um, Saudi Arabia being the best of all of them, Iran, and Venezuela. So if you're going to go to talk to the Iranians to get fuel, to get oil, why don't we just do it here? Right. It's in the ground. Yeah. We we have pumps in place. Suck it out of the ground. Like, let's get it moving. Yeah. Um, the cynic in me wants to think that there's a whole bunch, cause I know like my Exxon mobile stock went up a lot. Right. <laughs> um, so there are probably people like, Oh, let's keep this thing riding. But it brings us into the broader question versus the ideology. Um, and the whole green energy thing, which I fully support green energy. I have no problem with green energy. Um, but like everything else around here, it gets, becomes a left, right issue and is divisive right. and is turned into a zero sum game. The problem they, everything, everything is so nuanced and there are so many factors that play into it, but we just simplify everything because we have a bunch of dummies that live here that, you know, if you're for fossil fuel, you're against green energy. No, like I'd love to have solar panels on my house and not the this the solar panels where you someone leases it but actual solar panels where i just run off solar and have have power coming into my house for a cloudy day you know i'd love to have that right but i also want cheap fuel right and the fact that if we're just going to continue down this path of 
this chasing this fantasy of oh we're green now no we're not the technology's not there yet yeah i mean when your choices of an electric vehicle are an eighty thousand dollar tesla or a thirty to forty thousand dollar nissan leaf which sucks (laughs) yeah it's like green energy or green alternatives are not ready for prime time no and then you've got the whole debate of whether that electric vehicle is more green than a combustion engine after all is said and done. Yeah. After you've mined the lithium, after you've had to replace the battery, mm-hmm. you know, it, after, I mean, where does the energy come from? What what power plant is producing that energy? Yeah. Is that plant green? Mm-hmm. And then, then we also talk about, well, what is green energy? Yeah. Because some... You know, it, when you're talking about all options on the table, one of the options that never seems to be on the table is nuclear energy. Never. Which could be one of the greenest energies available. Yeah, well, so I'm convinced, and this might be true, I mean, someone could say, oh yeah, that actually happened, that the all the Greenpeace anti-nuke stuff is all being completely funded by the American Petroleum Institute. Could uh, be. And the and the, the the coal industry, like because that's their competition, you know. Like let's vilify this thing, and they got all these hippies on board with it, and it's going directly against what these hippies want to do. Um, and it's a it's a power that can be used. I mean, there are the Navy puts nuclear reactors on ships underwater, and they sail around underwater for months at a time, and they're completely safe. But it's not good enough to be just stationed on land on a bigger scale. Like, it just, it's a, to me, it's a non sequitur. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's a non sequitur. So, um, and then they point to Chernobyl and Three Mile Island. Um, Chernobyl was bad. Three Mile Island, everything worked exactly as it was supposed to. There wasn't a single fatality from Three Mile Island. Yeah, I mean, so while you were talking about that, The United States alone has 93 nuclear power plants. Mm -hmm. And that only accounts for 20% of our energy consumption. Yeah. And I'm I'm, right now, let's see, I'm I'm looking, I'm trying to find out when the last one was built. Um, And the reason why I'm looking that up, because I don't think we've had one built in over 30 years. Yeah. Um, As I'm scrolling, I'm trying to scroll through and trying to find it. Um, it says most reactors began construction by 1974, and it said following the Three Mile uh, Three Mile Island accident in 1979, and the changing economics, many of the planned projects were scrapped. So it looks like the last ones we built were in the 70s. Yeah, the 70s. But dude. at some point, these plants are going to be decommissioned. They can't last forever. Yeah, I you mean know? that's that's rough. There's one close to us, Calvert Cliffs. Yeah, down um, south, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and that, you know, I'm not sure when that plant was built, but you know, pretty, we're within, I live within 30 miles of a nuclear, you know, we live within 30 miles of a nuclear power plant. I don't feel unsafe being. I didn't know it existed until, and you know, divulged some information, my niece-in-law mm-hmm. works there. Okay. She is a nuclear engineer, yeah. like <laughs> literally a rocket scientist. Yeah. Uh, she works at that plant. Mm-hmm. Um, that was when I found out it was there. And to be honest with you, I forget <laughs> until you just said it, I was like, oh yeah, right. I forgot yeah. it was there. Yeah. I have, I have no qualms living next to one. Um, no, I, you know, and, but the other thing that's not really uh, put out there is a, an LNG power plant because mm-hmm. that burns clean too. Well, it burns clean. Nuclear, nukes don't burn anything, but that's a, a relative, that's a almost a zero net carb, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think people realize that about nuclear power plants. The cloud of smoke that comes out the top of the smokestack steam. is steam. Yeah. There's nothing in it but water vapor. Yeah. It's not carbon dioxide. It's not harmful chemicals. It's steam. Yeah. And that's why they put them next to rivers. Yeah. Because that's what they use. So the the way they work is they the rea- nuclear reaction is so hot that it boils the water which creates steam which drives a steam, tur- steam turbine which makes electricity 
That's how most electricity is done. It's basically just burning some water. Yeah. To produce steam that turns a turbine. Yeah. It doesn't matter the burning. Yeah, it doesn't even, matter what you're burning. Even, that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Like just boiling plants, water. Yeah. Coal plants are near water sources for that reason. So because you, you need a cold water source. Coal gets hot. Yeah. Burns. It boils water. Water yeah. produces steam. You get it turns yeah. a turbine. And then and then the they say oh well there's Blinky the three eyed fish and all that stuff on the other side. No, the, the water's not washing over the radioactive material. It it comes out hot. It just goes... The, the worst thing you're going to find are some monster freaking catfish on the other side because they're just in warm water all the time year well, round. Coal, pr- coal power plants do produce what they call coal slurry, though. Mm-hmm. Now, it doesn't go into the water source, supposedly. Yeah. They they create these catch basins. Yeah. but they're, And they're supposed to be lined. So that it can't leak through. Right. However, yeah, you know, but, I, th- I think there's been a couple of oopsies yeah. on that front. But coal coal p- plants also produce coal ash. Right. And they produce exhaust. And they produce yeah. all this stuff. Guess how much coal ash nuclear plants produce? Zero. You know, they don't produce anything. How much? How much? How much waste do they need to? You know, it, it, they're not. They're not. They don't need slurry ponds, right? At a nuclear power plant, yes. There is there nuclear waste. Yes, when the fuel rods are spent, there's nuclear waste. Mm-hmm. But you were you were telling me how much nuclear waste there's been yeah, in the so, last fifty two years, and yeah. I can't. I, I was astounded by how little it was. Yeah. So the, if they were to put it all in one place, it would be um, thirty feet high and have the footprint of a football field. So it's 100 yards long by, what is it, 50 yards across by 10 yards high. That's all the nuclear waste from every reactor in the United States put in one place. So I think people have this thing like, we're going to run out of room for it. And you're never going to run out of room for it. Right. I mean, think, so think about what you just said. That's all the nuclear, spent, all the spent nuclear fuel. Fu- mm-hmm. uh, f- fuel. All of it. Yeah. Since the st- since we started using nuclear f- uh, power plants. Yes. And all we have right now is 30 feet high and about 120 yards long. Yeah. You take that high school football field down the road. Mm-hmm. You basically, it, it, if you need to encapsulate it, you create a huge freaking concrete bunker that size. Yeah. Bury it underground, and you've just gotten rid of... 52 years of of yes of nuclear uh, uh nuclear i'm going to put this in quotes nuclear waste yeah now think about this let's say you could take all the coal plants offline mm-hmm. and so let's uh, let's say you took all the coal plants offline and you replaced it with nuclear for 52 years from now, you'd create another two football size fields of waste. Yes. For 52 years, though, mm-hmm. that's a lot of energy for a little waste over a 52 year period. Yeah. And you don't have to have coal ash. You don't have to worry about coal slurry no. and getting in the ground. You don't have to have trains transporting the coal to the plants, which create their own. Um, their own carbon emissions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't have people. Now, there are a whole lot of people in Appalachia. That's how they earn their living is through coal. So I get that. And I'm not dismissive of, of that. There's other uses for coal, though. Yeah. You still need to make steel. You still need to make, you know. But it, part of me wonders this. How much, it, how much of the pushback is from the people of Appalachia mm-hmm. versus the corporations in Appalachia that have a financial stake in the coal industry. If, if, if people really wanted to do away with the coal industry, they would override the coal lobbying Mm -hmm. and the coal corporations. Someone with enough money would move a company into West Virginia because it's cheap as dirt. Yeah. You, the land you can get land and building for cheap there. Yeah, there's so really real cost effective for a company to go there, mm-hmm. and you could retrain the population. Yeah. Now people are saying, well, people people who go into coal mines don't want to learn computer learning. 
<laughs> okay, right. I'm not saying that's what it's got to be. But I'm not going to be as dismissive as as uh, like when they shut down the um, the Keystone XL pipeline mm-hmm. and all those jobs that were lost when Joe Biden killed it with an executive order on day one. I'm not going to be as dismissive and as callous and as detached as like, oh, well, they can get other jobs. Teach them how to code. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. That that's just that's 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 crap. There's there's other blue collar work. Yeah, that could be put into that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, one of the I mean, one of the reasons why like Toyota and Nissan went to Tennessee, I mean they put car new car plants down there yeah. 10, 20 years ago because land was cheap mm-hmm. and the tax incentives were plentiful yeah, and there was a workforce. And guess what? West Virginia could do the same thing. Absolutely. Um, not only that, what. What about Amazon? Mm-hmm. What about you, you? Don't think those people would take decent money, eighteen, twenty bucks an hour, to go work in a warehouse? Yeah, better than working in the mine. Mm-hmm. Especially if you threw some benefits their way a little bit. Yeah, I mean, look, all I'm saying is there. There's other blue collar work that can move into the area on the cheap. And I don't think the. I think if the people there knew that that was the, that was an alternative. Like if there was a, again, when you're dealing with government and all this other stuff, it's going to be extremely inefficient. But if you got some people together and coordinated a response to it, like, okay, we're going to shut down this coal plant tomorrow, or we're going to shut down that coal plant in three years, but we're going to put an Amazon warehouse over here and we're going to employ all of you. Yeah. I don't think the people there would give two rats asses about that. It's not like they love working or living near. They they don't love working in the coal mine, and they don't love living near a coal uh, coal power plant. Yeah, and and if you took, like Joe Biden in his State of the Union speech, I guess that was when three weeks ago, whatever that was, um, talked about how in Ohio they're going to build chips and whole this huge campus of chip manufacturing and changing the rust belt to the chip belt or whatever nonsense he said but okay build chips in west a lot of the stuff that we build overseas bring it back and build it in these areas um it satisfies too it satisfies a bunch of different needs that i think have come come about since you know with the supply chain crisis and all this stuff we've just outsourced everything yeah um I mean, and our whole education system is designed to give to teach people how to work in factories. Well, the factories aren't there anymore. So we graduate these people from high school. Now they have to go into get mountains of debt so they can learn how to do something else and then get more so they get a master's degree in, in underwater basket weaving. But if you teach the you know, bring these some of these industries back and build this stuff here, use those areas of West Virginia where or wherever the coal mines were. So I think that's where most of the labor is in the mines, not necessarily the plant, the power plant itself. But I think it's in the coal mine, is where the actual people are working. Um, put other industry there, and you satisfy a whole bunch of different desires. You get people employed, you have cleaner energy. But nukes have been vilified for so long that you know here we are. Um, a beautiful technology that no one wants to use because they're afraid of it over hype. Well, it, if I, if I lived in West Virginia and we live close to West Virginia, I'd be, I'd be real pissed at the people that were in charge of the state government. Mm-hmm. Cause I, you can see when a governor wants to bring business into a state, they can make that happen. Oh yeah. You know, they do it through tax incentives. They do it through tax breaks. They they do it with uh, investments in infrastructure, whatever it is. But they they make it's kind of like you're uh, you know, you're, you're recruiting the hot girl or whatever. You're you're trying to catch the the hot thing on the market. You, know, you try to attract it there. You make a push. Yeah. And a lot of states do that. Tennessee did that, but West Virginia didn't do any of that. And I wonder if if you were to look at campaign contributions from statewide officials or people that are able to make those decisions. Mm-hmm. I bet you'd probably see a lot of money from big coal. I'm sure. And that probably stopped a lot of competition for the labor force coming in. I mean, for example, what about one thing I always wondered was, yeah, you know, that a lot of wind turbines have been put up in this country quite 
pretty quietly. Mm-hmm. I mean, but you see them in oh, a yeah, lot of I states, just, and in some places you see a lot of them. Yeah, I recently drove out to uh, to Wisp, mm-hmm. and on your way out to Wisp, like you can, see, they're all you see them on top of the mountains. Yeah, and I think they're cool. Now, so, can they supply all the needs, the power needs of the country? No, but no. if it helps, right, and it keeps us from having to get oil from Iran. But see, I wasn't even going there with it. What I was saying is we, we import the propellers and some parts of that wind, mm-hmm. that wind turbine or the wind generating system. We import a lot of it from China. Yeah. The solar panels are all made in China. Well, yeah. I mean, but I mean, even like the wind, the, uh, we might produce the turbine here, mm-hmm. but the wings on the, on the propeller. Yeah. Or I think we import them from China. Why can't we make that here? Yeah. Why couldn't they make that in West Virginia? West Virginia has got a pretty robust rail network yeah. because of coal. Mm-hmm. So it's set up perfectly for manufacturing because yeah. the, the transportation infrastructure there is already set up for freight. Um, so the fact that there isn't another industry in that, in that area or in that, in that state baffles my mind because any, any company that manufactures or produces anything, They've got to build that infrastructure out. They've yeah. got to connect to train lines, whereas West Virginia already has it. Yeah, it's already there. Yeah, I mean CSX is, is, has a big hub there. Um, I think uh, Norfolk Southern might also. I don't, I'm not sure which. There's only like four train company, four freight companies now. They all there was a lot of mergers, but yeah, they run CSX through. CSX is one of them. <laughs> BANS, BANSF, I think, is yeah. another one. Uh, Kansas City Southern, I thought was another one. There, and there's like f- three or four more, and I can't think of the ones right now. Uh, plus, some of the Canadian railway lines come down because mm-hmm. they're bringing oil from Canada down by rail. Yeah. Instead of the pipeline. Yeah. Well, and I, which is just, and again, we talk about green, mm-hmm. and I think we we probably talked. I probably said this on a on a previous episode where there's a how do you get water into your house. Does a truck come by and drop it off every day? No. There's a pipe. Moving bulk liquid, the most efficient way is via pipe. And it's the greenest way to do it. How much energy do you burn? If you needed to get water for your daily use, would you drive, get in your car and drive to the supermarket and buy the water you need for all your water needs? No, it comes through a pipe in your house. Now, if you're too bougie to drink that water, shame on you. But, you know, if I drink tap water. Um, so it all comes through a pipe. Virtue signal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I drink pot. I drink a tap water. Yes. I you drink do. bottled water. You bougie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I actually have a friend who swears that Voss water is superior and I'm like, uh-huh. yeah, you're mm-hmm. just getting sold a bill of goods, but yeah, um, <laughs> keep on at it, dude. He gives his dog tap, uh, a bottle of water. No, you can't. My dog drinks out of the toilet. <laughs> so Ed licks his own butt. Right. So I'm not opening a bottle of water for that guy. Your buddy's hiring a dog to lick his dog's butt. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's got a dog. <laughs> That's a, a dog for hire. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, but we shut that pipeline down. Yeah. And, it, and essentially what was just, you know, it, it, what was the objective behind doing that? Well, that, it made no sense. If you ever look at the, uh, at a map of the pipelines, oil pipelines, natural gas pipelines that run through this country, mm-hmm. adding that one pipeline would have been a minor addition. Yeah, like it was an important one, mm-hmm. but it's it it, it <laughs> it's kind of like we don't want a new high we don't want a new interstate highway. Yeah, well, there's already forty of them. <laughs> So one more in really doing the damage you think it's doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's make this our, let's, let's, let's plant our flag on this, on this one. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it shocks me though. Cause we kind of, we started talking about, we were talking about coal, but we started with nuclear energy and the fact that nuclear energy isn't considered green baffles my mind. Yeah. I don't understand that. Like there's, there's, the little to no way. Well, I'm not going to say it. the little waste that comes out of it. Yes. Is it dangerous to bury it and basically put it in a mausoleum somewhere? Yes. It yeah. could. If, if the contents inside the, the structure leaks and then the structure itself leaks and gets into 
whatever earth there is around it. Sure, that could be an issue. I'm pretty sure that would be a very, very rare, rare occurrence if it ever happened at all. Yeah. I mean, think about what has to go wrong. Mm-hmm. Well, and even this, the location where they've selected to store it is out. What's the name of the? It's like I think a, Yucca Mountain yeah. in Nevada. It's a freaking mountain. Yeah, it's <laughs> and they selected it because it has like no seismic activity. It's remote. It's not near anything. The mountain itself is very set. Like it's not going to collapse. It's very like that's why they chose that location. So and they when they chose it, like there's plenty of space in there. To, they'll have cold fusion figured out before this thing fills up. Um, but the whole, it's just unnecessary fear that came from what I like to, what I think is just a very cleverly and deviously constructed market, sl- marketing campaign to slander the, the technology. Yeah. Well, and, and I think in the, in the people, people of our age's mind, Chernobyl is, what kind of sticks with everybody. Yeah. And it was funny because I mean, HBO did a, um, did a mini series on Chernobyl called Chernobyl. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really interesting. And a lot of the issues that a, a lot of the aftermath that occurred from it. Um, and even the problem itself never needed to happen. Mm-hmm. Essentially it was like, there, I think there. If I remember right, it, there was a test that kind of went wrong. Someone wasn't watching what they should have watched, so it was operator error that started the whole mm-hmm. uh, meltdown re- reaction to begin with. Um, so it was actually, it was it was labeled as this as this horrific event, but it was a it was a preventable one. Mm-hmm. And but it it basically took out the entire nuclear industry. Yeah, which sucks. Because, like you, it, it, we're talking about, it, we have a clean source of energy. Yeah, and but we're afraid to use it. If you're that committed to being green, then you need to be all in on being green. Not well, I'm green for this stuff, right? And I want to, I want to have my Prius or my Tesla, and drive around in that, and so that I can show how green I am. But I'm not committed as far as I don't care that a coal plant's what's charging that Tesla. Yeah. It, it's not just what's charging it. So, yeah, you got the coal power plant charging it, and everyone says, well, the amount of coal, you know, the, the amount the amount of um, coal needed to power my car for 10 years is less than the carbon footprint of your car over 10 years or whatever. All right, I, I get that, and that might be true. But you're also not taking into consideration the mining of the lithium that went into the battery. Yeah. Or when you have to change the battery, now you've got two batteries and the lithium that went into both of them. Mm -hmm. Now, there might be new battery technology on the horizon, but it's not there yet. Yeah. And we're still using lithium. Lithium is not, one, it's not cheap. Two, you got to mine it out of the ground just like coal. Yeah. Um, I hear the mining process of it is like they use leaching and all kinds of, it's really bad for the entire surrounding area Uses especially a of, where there's a lot of water right especially it. where it's all being done which is in china which i'm sure they're not making sure they have the right barriers for runoff and all that stuff they're just like go wherever yeah it i want to say also i thought australia had some lithium mines too mm-hmm. the u.s actually has a lithium mine and we actually have a lot of lithium deposits in this country unfortunately they're not near it's it's one thing to mine it. It's another thing to get it to where it needs to go mm-hmm. to manu- to make it into something that's manufacturable. Yeah. I think there, I, I, I want to say there's a huge lithium deposit in Nevada somewhere or Utah, mm-hmm. but they'd have to truck it down to Texas to, to do go through the manufacturing process. And apparently there's no infrastructure at all between yeah. the two. So they have to read. It'd be a huge undertaking just to get it ready, just so you could get it out. Build a but, lithium pipeline. You're right. I'm sure all the greenies would be. Oh, it's a lithium pipeline. <laughs> Must be great. <laughs> I mean, because don't, don't forget, we don't just use lithium in the cars. Yeah. I mean, every single thing you've got with a battery, mm-hmm. your laptop, your phone. Um, if you have a if you have a Tesla, your car. Yeah. Um, it, it, 
any any type of battery uses lithium, unless it's an alkaline. But those are slowly phasing out. Yeah, that's like your like your double A's and yeah. But even some double A's, triple A's, some of them are lithium ion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, so it's like, how green is your green solution? Especially when your Tesla costs eighty grand versus I I can get a Nissan Altima for twenty three. Yeah. Yet you're telling me. This car that costs four times, uh, or four times as much, is more green. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know. Now, and the thing is, like, I'm not an anti-electric car. Neither am I. I think electric cars are cool mm-hmm. because they go, they're fast as they're as AF as the kids would say. Yeah. Um, like the 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 Tesla Plaid. I mean, it's the zero. To, it's and the difference is like they get their all. They develop max power instantaneously. Um. Oh, they don't have to shout out to Elon Musk though for calling it plaid. Oh, that, absolutely. A reference to space balls. Yeah. Okay. I just, I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> um you know, I the the Porsche Taycan, like they're cool and they're fast and I love it. Um I don't love it cuz it's green. Like I love it cuz if I got one of those, I'd be doing the upgrades and like like just stomping on the gas everywhere. I'd get like 8 miles to to a charge. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you would have gotten to church in 3 seconds. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um you know, smoking tires, but I wouldn't be smoking tires cuz it's it's they develop the, the traction so good on them. Right. Um but yeah, like but I hear they're terrible in the snow. I can so, see that with, with that much torque. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, they're awful in the snow. Yeah. It's like when when I had my old, old Camaro, like I'd start in third. Yeah. That thing would just, I would just crawl out of stuff. It was great. Um, but so I'm not anti electric car. I'm not anti green energy or renewables. But I just, I don't understand why it has to be. If you're in that green camp, why you're completely anti even clean fossil fuels. You know, LNG burns clean. Why are you anti that? Um, it doesn't make sense, especially when all this green stuff you want to do, it's pie in the co- the sky stuff. It doesn't I- exist. It's not on a wide enough scale yet to, to do anything. It's like they're early adapters, but they're driving policy for everyone else based upon this, this ideal. And it's, it's, you know, I think right now with the prices we're seeing at the, you know, because we're not the, we can be the energy dominant. We're not. We've just chosen not to be. Yeah, it is an odd situation that we, we, like you said, we have the ability to do this, and we don't. Yeah. And now we're in a situation. It, it's always funny. Like we decided to stop. You know, we, whichever administration it is, they decide to they they don't want to pump as much. You mm-hmm. know, no more drill, baby, drill. All right. And then all of a sudden, we get hit with a situation where we need the oil. And we don't have it. Yeah. Although, technically, we do have some in reserves that we could use for this type of situation, yeah. but they're really reluctant to let it go. Mm-hmm. But rather than pump out more barrels of oil to keep our costs low and maybe export, and, and we do export the excess, they decided to cut the supply here and import from other people. Yeah. Now, part of it is. You kind of, because you're importing it from these countries, you can exert some financial pressure on them Mm -hmm. for other purposes. But, yeah, what if you can't? What if the person is in FU mode? Yeah. And you can't control the price. Because, I mean, don't forget, oil is a commodity. It's traded on the open market. Mm -hmm. So the price is what the market bears. And if, if you have speculators that are buying more now, driving up the price, in anticipation that the price is going to be higher later on, and the price doesn't come down, well, they made the right bet because they bought in yeah. early. I mean, I remember years ago, that's how Southwest was able to still keep flights so cheap. Mm-hmm. They bought, I think it was like a 30-year contract on fuel. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't know who the dummy was that <laughs> on the other side of that a negotiated contract, but apparently they, they paid up a certain percentage of the time and mm-hmm. someone took money now versus money later, mm-hmm. but they were able to keep that fuel cost low 
which actually helped Southwest survive. Yeah. Um, and actually not only survive, but thrive from a regional operator into a, a national and almost, I think now it, they'd go to some international they places, do. but, um, but it helped that company grow cause they bet on, they bet on gas prices at the time yeah. versus future or they bought, and you can even buy future kind. I mean, the, the commodities, the commodities exchanges are crazy. Well, the, I've, I've thought of, so during the last time gas was super expensive, I think it was like 08, 09, I said, well, here's how we could, the speculators, if you're buying gas, you have to take physical possession of the item. So, okay, yeah, you want to do this? That's fine. You have to actually take physical possession of it. You right. can't just do it from a desk in your suit and tie. No, no, you have to go out there and actually get, buy, like, if it's pork bellies, guess what, dude? You now have... 20,000 tons of pork bellies. Mm -hmm. Go put that somewhere. Yeah. You know? And, like, wait, I can't just do this from my from my office on Wall Street. Nope. You yeah. have to go actually take possession of it. Yeah. It, it sucks that people like that can mess with the price of the pump, though. Yeah. Simply because on a gamble, mm -hmm. basically. I mean, essentially, I mean, they, they're doing it based on, like, the prices went up because of the whole ukraine russia situation and people were worried that the supply would somehow get cut off i mean the supply is still flowing like normal yeah but because of the speculators the price went up mm -hmm. and it's just like uh, if we had control of that here it wouldn't have gone up yeah. as much it might have gone up a little bit but it wouldn't have gone up like it did yeah, on and, us. and again it's a it's a global commodity but if you're putting more supply into the um into the market, then you're not... And you know the Saudis and OPEC, they're like, oh yeah, we're going to let them twist in the wind a little bit. Mm -hmm. Even though the only reason Saudi Arabia exists is because we've essentially just defended it for, um, you know, the, their entire military. Like, we just defend them. You know, Saddam was, Hussein would have rolled right over them too. Um, but they, they know that big brothers stand behind them, but it's, you know, they can be... Let's let them twist the wind. And but the, the thing that just gets me is, like, you're going to talk to Iran for 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 oil. I but mean. They said that's why they put the, they were back in negotiations on the nuclear deal. Yeah. And, oh, by the way, we want to buy some oil. Yeah. <laughs> like, talk about getting in bed with some bad people. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Okay. But, you know. I So, yeah. And then you have the force, forces here that I think on the green side, like, oh, we need to teach everyone a lesson. We need to get off our addiction to oil. Well, there's nothing else out there yet to replace it. Right. So tell me, like, even if everyone went all electric with their cars tomorrow, where do you charge all of them? You know, there's only right. f so many free charging spots at the mall to charge your Tesla or your Leaf or your... Well, and you've got to remember, a, a large reason for that... Charging network is Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. He put in a ton of, he basically made electric cars viable in this country Yeah, because he was willing to spend money and put the charging infrastructure in place to a certain extent. Yeah. So when enough people saw these charging stations, other electric car companies were like, okay, well, you know, we'll, the, so we'll produce them on a larger scale. Yeah. Like Ford doesn't produce a Mach E or a Ford Lightning if Tesla doesn't put out the the Model S yeah, it just doesn't happen. Yep. And, and it took them what? How long has Tesla been out? Ten years. Yeah. So, it, ten years later, Ford's getting in the game. Mm -hmm. A major automaker. Yeah. Like even a major corporation like Ford or GM or Toyota. Yeah. Weren't willing to put in the investment into a charging infrastructure in this country and still haven't. Mm -hmm. It's been Elon Musk. So yeah. for all you greenies out there who hate Elon Musk yeah. and they do not like Elon Musk, right? you might want to th think about thanking him mm -hmm. because he's the one that brought your beloved electric car to the market yeah. on a la on a large scale production and dragged the major car producers along with him. Yeah, because now they're all like uh, Chevy just came out with the Silverado and it has an E in it. It's like the Sylvie Rada, whatever mm -hmm. it is, and the Ford Lightning. And then now you've got, you know, Porsche has the Taycan. Um, Mercedes-Benz just came out with a, I forget what they call it, but essentially they 
They say it's an electric S class, but I just read a review. A guy named Jason Cavanisa on uh, Instagram does car reviews and mm-hmm. was like just crapped all over it. Um, we have that stupid looking BMW i3 and uh, i8. Yeah. Like, could you design a worse looking car? Yeah. I don't think you could. <laughs> My kids are drawing better looking cars than yeah. that. And then you've got, uh, now I like Polestars. They look really cool. But you know, I've, not, I've never seen one in the wild. You want to know nobody, nobody even knows what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody knows what Polestar is. Right. Um, <laughs> that's how that's how prevalent they are right yeah. now. I think Volvo has something. Vo- like Volvo used to, so Polestar was a, they used to, um, they were a, a, a tuner company, basically. They used to uh, take Volvos and, mm-hmm. and make them look much better than Volvo did, which wasn't hard because Volvo was making basically boxes on wheels <laughs> right. for the boxes. longest time. Yeah. Um, which now people are apparently are paying like 80 grand for yeah. one of like those V seventies or whatever, mm-hmm. like the, or the eight seventies or eight fifties. I forgot what they yeah. call them, but basically highly, highly desirable for, for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think, and then Polestar kind of went on their own. And now I think Volvo owns Polestar. I don't know. Some weird thing. Yeah. Which China owns Polestar, owns Volvo. Right. Yeah. They sold, Volvo sold off to. Their passenger car division, but they still kept their trucks, marine, and diesel. Volvo makes a great diesel. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, they kept, Volvo kept all that, but their passenger car division was sold to to uh, to the Chinese. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just, and again, like, I just don't understand why it's always this all or nothing. With everything in this country, it's always a... a only, only this, not that. Yeah, yeah, and and why we're not looking at like I think a transition to renewables is a good thing, but to to make it simply just okay, we're going to cut off. It, it's all, like I made a joke. You know, uh, a buddy of mine was getting his master's degree, and the school he went to was they went paperless. They say, oh, we're paperless now, and I always joke that you know, oh yeah, the government's going to go paperless. They're just going to stop buying paper. But you're still going to need paper for everything. And that's kind of how this is. Well, oh, we're green now. We're carbonless. But you still need gas. <laughs> right. So, you know, like yeah. like everything else, just just done poorly for, uh, executed poorly, planned poorly, done for political reasons. Well, you've also got some logistics involved with why you can't go all one way. For example, like solar. Mm-hmm. The question from the green side is, well, why can't we just go and put a whole bunch of solar panels in the desert? Well, it, I guess, it, and there was actually, a, there's a YouTube video about this thing. It's got something to do with, like, the environmental impact of, of covering the desert, basically. Mm-hmm. Like, you you change the environment. Yeah. And, like, so you don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. And then how much space would you need to cover in solar panels to be able to, to, to power the entire world? And, yeah. It was a really good video. I wish I could remember where I saw it, but um, and then what do you do with the spotted three-toed horn lizard, right, or yeah. whatever? That's got to die off. The, the, For, scre- the scream a pillar. The, so <laughs> you're going to be real green, but you're okay not being green by killing off the three-eyed you know, tiger shark. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sacrifice has got to be made, I guess, right? Yeah. But it's funny, like you, like if someone turns around and tells them, "Well, we can't do this because sacrifices have to be made." Well, those weren't the sacrifices they wanted to make. Right. Like the three-eyed tiger shark, they're okay sacrificing. Screw him. <laughs> but the three-eyed <laughs> Screw horn... that spe- entire species. Right. But the three-eyed horn newt. <laughs> no, I, I want to save that. It's like, all right, buddy. It probably just gets down to one's cute and one's not. Sure. Although um, I'm pretty sure anything three-eyed. Yeah. Not cute. Three-eyed and horn generally means no. I'm pretty sure. I'm sure. I, I would have stopped at just the three eyes not being cute. <laughs> that would have been a little creepy. Me like, eh, but, like so. but there are some things solar wise. Like, is it doesn't hasn't Elon Musk developed like a essentially it's like a solar shingle? He, yes, the solar roof. Yeah, yeah. Like, appara- apparently, it wasn't cost viable yet. Yeah, but once it gets cost viable, which probably is just a lot of scale, um, that's stuff that like okay, let's build. You know, you have to have X amount of solar on your on any new construction. You know? Yeah. Um, now they did they do the dumb stuff where like, oh, every new building has to have so much green space. So you have like these new buildings that have like trees and grass on the <laughs> roof, and it, I don't know what, if it actually does anything. I think again, it's just a giant 
virtue signal again. <laughs> like, you know, you see the new building and that the hip the new hipster apartment building and it's got trees and grass and it's got a tree coming up through the middle, yeah, going, going out of the like, roof. Hmm, I seem to remember a time when that meant that a house was effed up because it's got a tree growing through it. <laughs> right. But now we put it there. <laughs> People are looking like, you know you got a tree growing inside, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's green. Yeah. It's green now. <laughs> Are you and, sure about that? Right, and then you've got like, oh, all the surfaces have to be permeable. Okay. Like that's, but the thing is, once you start adding all these regulations in, then it, like you're looking at California, where it costs so much money to build anything that there's like no more low cost housing available for anybody because it costs so much to build low housing that none of it, just by definition, to build it, it stops being affordable. Affordable in California is half a million bucks. Yeah. Like, I'm going to say that one more time. Affordable in California is half a million yeah. bucks. Like, that that number is crazy to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's nuts. A, a, a friend of mine at work, his brother-in-law works for, I want to say Google, one of, the, one of the Silicon Valley tech companies out there, and makes a lot of money and does well. Bought a house, like just a regular house. It's like $1.2 million for a house. Like just that. Three bedroom single family house, like a ranch house. It's nuts. Yeah, like what? What's the draw? So I, w- this is gonna sound stupid, but you ever watch that show Flip or Flop with like or Tark and Christina or whatever they are? I think uh, I've home, seen it. Like HGTV. Yeah. So they buy these tiny houses, <laughs> and they flip them. That's the basically. I mean, mm-hmm. that's almost every HGTV show, right? Yeah. Buy buy a house, flip it, sell it for more money, yeah. right? Almost every house they do, it's like this three bedroom, two bath ranch house, no garage, uh, not a very big plot of land. They buy it, they buy these dilapidated houses of like four fifty, mm-hmm. and they spin it around for like six twenty five, seven fifty. <laughs> I'm like, three quarters of a mil for that? Yeah. I'm like I don't know how people live there, but yeah. then, but like you said though, someone they go work for Google. They, you know, they, they're making 300, 400,000 a year. Yeah. And that's what drives the prices up. Yeah. You got to live somewhere. But at the end of the day though, you know, that, that $300,000 salary goes probably about as far as someone in West Virginia making 80 to a hundred, you know, 50 to 80 grand a year. Yeah. To get that same house for buck yeah, 25. You're, you're set, you're living the same lifestyle that you would living out here you know, living somewhere else for making less money. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's great. You make that much money, but you're, it's all your, your bank account's still like mine. It's just a, it's just a transit terminal. It's just waiting to go someplace else. <laughs> sure. We're, 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 all, we're getting the same things, but we're dealing with different zeros. Yeah. Right. So, you know, for me, something that costs 10 costs you a hundred. Yeah. You're not living any better than I am. Right. But it's, it's just, it boggles my mind that stuff is so expensive out there. Yeah. Uh, I think gas out there, like for us, gas, we we were just talking, what was it, four twenty five a gallon? Mm-hmm. Out there, it's over 7 Oh, yeah. It's like double the price. Yeah. <laughs> like, why? Right. Well, Because all the that, taxes and all this other garbage, yeah. and people can afford to pay it. Y- yeah. But, yeah the, but they're, like you said, though, the money in their bank account is probably the same as mine. Mm-hmm. Even though... Even though the money coming in is much bigger, the money going out is the same amount bigger. Yeah, yeah. And I've, like, so anyone who's traveled, if, if you've ever flown through Heathrow, Heathrow is such a hub that they have a transit terminal. So when you land there, I forget whether it's you don't have to go through immigrations or customs because you're, you're technically nowhere. So it's called the transit terminal. And... That's what I call my bank account is the transit terminal. <laughs> like the money just comes in, it stays there for a couple of days, and then it just goes on its way. It's it doesn't the, have to go through. I don't it, like. I don't. It doesn't have to go through customs. Doesn't have to go through uh, immigrations. It just comes in and just goes poof. <laughs> it, it's Tom Hanks in, in the movie Terminal. Yeah, he's stuck there. Yeah, except it doesn't stay there in my account. It just <laughs> right. goes someplace else. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there a little guy that's telling it to leave? Like they like the guy from that right. movie. Yeah, like chasing but around trying to find him. In here is uh it is uh not freedom. But out there you walk through that door, you're free. <laughs> and he's like, No. Yeah. I stay here. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Wasn't that movie like his country like 
dis- like it stopped. So he came from the country of Krakosia. Mm-hmm. And they, I, once he got to uh, New York, Krakosia, apparently the country ceased to exist because yeah. there was a coup. <laughs> and so his passport was no longer good. Yeah. So he couldn't leave the airport because he didn't have a passport or a country of origin. <laughs> <laughs> So then he lives in the airport and he like starts renovating it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he make of course everyone loves him. It's actually I kind of like the movie. I think it's a really underrated movie, but it's uh I, I always thought the premise of it was hysterical when uh I think I think it was uh, the the character the actor Stanley Tucci, mm-hmm. I think is the guy. Who's like the guy holding him there, and eventually he just goes, "Look right out there. You can go. You can walk right out there and be free." <laughs> and he's like, "No, <laughs> <I'm> like, okay." <laughs> yeah, I've only seen that parts of that. I've never seen it from beginning to end. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I guess the the main point we're making, like, look, it, it, as far as like this renewable energy goes, I mean, with gas prices going through the roof, maybe, and I know this isn't going to happen, but the people that are screaming about renewables and probably like see this is why we need renewables or maybe we do you know every everybody in the boat solution where we use everything we got yeah. or maybe we use some things that are green that you don't want to think are green yeah and, um yeah and and they can like it doesn't have to all happen now right you know if, if like bring it online gradually and see it as a gradual improvement as a process over time Rather than just, I mean, look at all the the progress we've made to this point. If you take a modern car, a modern internal combustion engine, its emissions are less traveling at 65 miles per hour than a car built in 1955 is turned off and sitting still. Right. Yeah. So that's some big time when you've got the... the uh, there's the, the remember when they came out like the the LEVs low emission vehicle, then there was the the PZEV the practically zero emission vehicle like that's some serious uh, progress that we've gone yeah and if you go to Europe which all these these lefty types love to point to Europe but th- the reason you can't just buy a car in Europe and bring it over here is because it won't pass our emission standards right and when you walk around like you can if you're in pretty much any European city you can sm- the last time I, or the first time I went to Europe, the first thing I noticed was the smell of the exhaust everywhere. And one of the reasons is because they've taxed everything to oblivion. So people were riding around on these little two stroke scooters, which have zero emissions, anything. Like it's just, they're just putting out like, like they, a, a two stroke naturally just burns oil as it, you mix the gas and oil together. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, they also use a lot of diesel. Yeah. Because, so Europe, they tried the experiment of the gas taxes, mm-hmm. the high gas taxes. So unleaded was like through the roof and the car manufacturer's response to that was to make more diesels. Yeah. So for example, I mean, they, there's cars like, uh, the, uh, the Ford Focus. Mm-hmm. Ford Focus is one of, I think is one of the best selling cars in the world. Um, obviously not here cause we don't like small cars, yeah. but in the rest of the world, and it we're is. all fat. Well, that's, <laughs> but, um, but everywhere else in this, in this, in the world has, that Ford Focus has a diesel alternative, mm-hmm. and it's real popular in Europe. Yeah, real popular in Britain. Um, but every manufacturer, Toyota has diesels. Yeah, Mazda diesel. They all have diesels because diesel doesn't cost as much over there. Yep, and it also you get much better mileage out of a diesel. So when I, the last time I was in Europe was you know, probably about thirteen years ago, there was a. Uh, the, the car we, I was there with my mom and dad, and the car we rented to go visit Normandy was a Mercedes Benz C230 diesel wagon. And that thing just sipped fuel. I mean, it was crazy. And then when we pull off the road to, to like a rest stop to fill up with, to, to fill it up, and then you look at the other line of cars, like, it's almost reversed. Like, the diesel pumps got trucks and nothing else. There, it was like the gas pumps had like, it was mostly diesel pumps. Yeah. At their version of like a Sheets or a Wawa. Well, the funny thing is, is even with our own example, now we always got kind of worse gas mileage with our diesels here because of exhaust emissions, mm-hmm. the emissions thing. And there was a whole VW emissions scandal and all that other stuff. If I could buy one of those cars, I would. I don't so, care. <laughs> so at one point you could. Yeah. 
but because uh, I think the last year from was 2013. Yeah, they parked them all in the desert. Yeah, but then eventually they worked out some deal, and you could then and then they could then sell them. Yeah, but they weren't producing anymore. But a Volkswagen Jetta, a Jetta was the same size as like a Taurus back then, like in the eight eighties nineties. With a Jetta diesel, you could get like forty five miles a gallon. A comparable gas engine car, I think you were getting like twenty three. Yeah. Like you literally doubled the gas mileage. Mm-hmm. But the only thing anyone ever looked at was the the carbon emissions coming yeah. out of the back. Well, it's like, look, if I'm only getting, if I'm only using half the fuel, it, is, I don't think people gave it enough opportunity. Yeah. Um, especially with the more modern diesels. Mm-hmm. They weren't clacking anymore. Yeah. Like it wasn't like the... Yeah, it wasn't that wasn't that end, sound an engine anymore? It wasn't the, it wasn't like it the did, truck diesel? Right, it didn't sound like a, a you were, had a coffee can rattling screws around in it. Yeah, but I, the truck diesels, I actually the new diesel. Well, first of all, they, they all have you have to put def in them. The new ones apparently have issues. Yeah, and then they don't even sound like diesels anymore. The, the dude up the street has a, it's a, uh, GMC. Um, Sierra. Sierra Denali 2500. It's a night. I mean, it's like probably an $85,000 truck. But he drive. it does not sound like a diesel. I want, you know, I want to roll coal in that thing. <laughs> right. Like, give me an old 7.3, you know, or an old, uh, an old Duramax. Like, just <laughs> like, I want to hear that. Right. Um, now you can't even tell they're diesels. Yeah. I mean, the cars, though, had come such a long way. I mean, the, the, the diesels in the, in those medium duty trucks, a lot of them were Cummins. Yeah. Um, with Allison transmissions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in the big ones, they were the uh, the Cummins ISX engines. So Cummins was making a whole bunch of diesels, and they still do. Yeah. Um, but the car ones, especially the latter ones, like the ones made in like the late 2010s, early, like the 2010 area before the whole thing happened, they were, they were ridiculously efficient. Mm-hmm. Um, and quite, and they, they were fairly quiet too. Like if I took a drive in a diesel Passat and a gas Passat and inside the car, like with my ears, couldn't tell the difference. Yeah. Now I could tell with the low end torque, mm-hmm. which one was which. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, unfortunately, I mean, diesel just got a worse reputation. And then when they threw, especially with the cars, when you had to put the ad blue in, which is yeah. the diesel exhaust fluid. It ruined emissions even. It ruined not emissions. It ruined gas mileage even more. Yeah. Um, well, they it, did it's some just a shame. And then there are some other some bad steps, like when GM came out with the uh, well the fir- the the four six eight diesel that was built in response to the last fuel crisis we had with Jimmy Carter, Jimmy <laughs> Carter one point <0. laughs> um, That thing was a was a that thing was just a turd. Um, and then GM had another diesel they made. They put them in like suburbans and and things like that. It was a it was a three fifty block, but it just had, they just put diesel heads on it. It was a pile of garbage, um, and the reliability was bad. Then you had those old the the Mercedes Benz diesels that were just slow. They weren't even turbocharged, <laughs> and they just and the performance was dreadful. I think a lot of people still have that in their heads too with them. Couldn't get out of its own way. Oh yeah, yeah. So. You'll still see them out there. They still run. Well, they'll run forever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, shoot. <laughs> Zero I mean, maintenance. That's why, we, I mean, you're talking about those um, well, those mid-80s diesels. Yeah. Man, they, they still go now. Yeah. People don't give them up, though. Like, well, people are like, well, I don't ever see any for sale. Yeah, because no one's, no one's selling them. Right. Like, why would you sell a car where if you just change the oil every 10,000 miles, you're it just good? It goes. Change out some glow plugs every now and then. <laughs> you're, you're, like, that's how old they are. They got glow plugs. Yeah. That's how old they are. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I'm. A, I guess I'm an optimist. I'm hoping that with this current fuel situation, people will kind of be like, okay, maybe we should have, maybe we shouldn't have killed off all the yeah. uh, all this uh, alternative energy that we were talking about. I think we should just, we should stop letting the zealots run things. Right. You know, stop answering to the most extreme base. Like on the like, so right now the Democrats are in So stop. Stop listening to the most extreme wing of your party because you're not going to come up with any solutions with them. Right. Because they're just zealots. They're going to die on that hill. Um, you know, Putin, was it 
uh, just go buy a Tesla. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I got I got an extra eighty five grand. In yeah, my pocket. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I can find one of them. Because there's just a supply chain issue. Thanks, Dick. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, I think it's funny. Like, it, it, there there's a lot of out of touchness going on. It's like yeah. George Takei saying, "Oh, well, everyone everyone should be okay with paying more at the pump. Yeah, for that, what, for the cause. Yeah, I do. What, what cause? What, you think people are like they just got extra couple thousand hanging right. around? Yeah, George, who's worth fourteen million dollars. Right. Or you have that that uh, non funny um, idiot on the. Uh, he replaced Letterman. What's his name? Stephen Colbert. Colbert, oh, that guy. Jesus. Yeah, like talk about out of touch. Yeah, like I'll gladly pay fifteen dollars, and I drive a Tesla. F you, dude. Like, get. Look, I, I wish their ratings would. T- and then you hear the the barking seals in the audience. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, oh. yeah. Meanwhile, every single one of those people in there, if they had to pay fifteen dollars a gallon, yeah, they wouldn't leave their house. Right. They want you want to shut down the economy. You shut down the mobility of the people. Yeah. Yeah, but seriously, that's how you do it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, some of the that's why I can't stand the talking heads. Yeah, you, know, you got the the late night host making millions of annual salary, N- yeah. the news host making millions of salary, the guests on these shows making millions in salary. None mm-hmm. of these people work a nine to five. No, none of these people make less than half a million bucks a year. Yeah, no one just puts seventy two dollars into the tank of their Subaru Outback. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and hope it lasts two two full weeks yeah. because you know what? Maybe they don't have seventy two bucks. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm lucky. Like, one of my cars is a, like an eleven gallon fuel tank. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, even at five bucks a gallon, I gotta pay fifty five bucks to fill that car up. Yeah. I mean, if that gets me a week. I mean, you're talking. Yeah, you're talking two hundred and twenty dollars a month to fill up one car, mm-hmm. and most families in this country have at least two. Yeah, so you're talking now. I, I I'm I'm looking at over four hundred four four hundred forty dollars a month just for gas. Yeah, never mind insurance. Yeah, uh, uh, maintenance on the car. Yeah, and never mind, fact, to... never mind the fact. Never mind the Now the car costs twenty percent more than it did last year. Right, and the eight percent inflation. Yeah, on everything. And look, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's it's one guy's fault. I'm, just, I'm. But I'm saying, hey, look, you got the power to mitigate this. You you have the magic pen. Yeah. I'm not saying it's the pipeline, but look, release some oil in the oil reserves and tell these, and tell these fossil fuel companies to pump some stuff while we're working on this other alternatives. Yeah. Because not everyone's going out and buying an electric car. Right. Because not everyone can afford one. Right. Yeah, I can't afford one, and it, the range still isn't high enough for what I'd want it. Right. I, you know? I, I, can't, I can't afford one. Yeah. I, I, it, what is a Model 3? 63000 Yeah. For a Tesla Model 3? Yeah, a Mach-E, 60000 50, 80000 mm-hmm. I mean, what am I going to get? A Nissan Leaf that I can barely fit in? <laughs> yeah. For, gotta, a, a, and that's $45,000. Yeah. That's the cheapest electric car. Mm-hmm. Unless you're talking like smart four two, yeah. go screw yourself. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm not getting into that freaking. And that's still a gas accident machine. So. <laughs> a bicycle would win in an accident versus that thing. A pedestrian, a big dude. Don't hit a big dude. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, you know, what the funny part is, like I saw, I saw a smart four two, and I was crossing the street. I had no qualms about just walking in the street. <laughs> like I saw it coming, I was like, eh, he'll stop. Because if he doesn't, I'm going to do more damage to his. The first car. one I ever saw of those was in Europe, and then I, the other one was the Mercedes Benz A Class, oh, which was like this little kind of just like that thing. And uh, yeah, I don't see too many smart cars around though. You see, you see them every once in a while. There's there's a guy around here that owns one. Yeah. When I used to take the girls to preschool, I would see him every morning because he mm-hmm. would drive this. He would drive the opposite way. I was going to take the girls to preschool. I mean, I haven't done it in years, but yeah, I, I I would see one every now and then. And then for some reason they're popular with the RV community because mostly because you can ju- you can literally drive them up on like a little cargo container, <laughs> a cargo carrier on the back yeah. of the RV, so you don't have to tow it. You just drive it up on it and it sits there like a little. It's like a little fucking. It's a purse dog, yeah. <laughs> basically yeah, for the RV it, community. You probably just put it in a little cargo area underneath it. <laughs> <the, laughs> yeah. Oh boy, but yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Hopefully, some common sense comes into play here. And like, like I'm with you. I'm like, hey, let let's get some, 
let's get five nuclear power plants up and running, get some capacity up. Although for us, that's a drop in the bucket. We already got 93 of them. Yeah. But let's start building more of them. Yeah, get not? that green energy. Maybe we could take those coal plants offline, get your green, get your green on, right. and 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 maybe uh, you know make some progress in this front. And let's just be on, be be honest with uh, with people. Right. Drop the bullshit. You know. So. You know the premise. Of, one of the premises of this podcast is that we're two guys that are fairly moderate. We've talked about this before. We, you know, exactly where our political positions are, and if you don't, you can go find that podcast where we talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yes, we're conservative on some things, but we're pretty liberal on others. Um, 42% of Americans don't identify as Democrat or Republican. 40%. Yeah. That is the majority in this country. Yeah. Not the Democrat. They don't want you to believe that. But it, you've got 60% of the rest of the country split evenly roughly 30 percent 30 percent and i know my number i'm not exact on the numbers right. but i'm close 30 percent 30 percent there's 30%. some green parties and some communists sure. and some sure. wiccan alien parties and sure i might look into the alien party um but you got 30 percent on the red side 30 percent on the blue 42 percent the middle outnumbers either side by at least 12 percent yeah and we vote and we need government to realize this. Yeah, it, it's it's why the, it's why the White House and the House and the Senate flip because the people in the middle don't like the extremes of either side. Right, so, so when so when when one side gets in and they go do the extreme stuff and they both do it mm-hmm. because they they whenever one party gets in they think they have a mandate to do whatever they want yeah. and that everyone thinks they're great. Yeah, no. It's just we thought they sucked, that the other side sucked more than you do. Right. The, one side got really, really out of whack Yeah. after they got voted in because we didn't like the other party that was already in power. Now you're going insane, and you're going to get voted out of power. It's like I, I, we talked about this before. The, the first party that gets into power and executes a moderate policy mm-hmm. for, for, for two and then the remaining two years of a presidency will be the first party to get reelected. Yeah. And it won't flip. Mm-hmm. That's my theory. The last time that happened was when Ray- Reagan handed over power to H.W. Bush. Yeah. Who only got one term. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. At any other time, though, it's, and I think Carter was a one-term president, too. He was. But he had, there were extenuating circumstances there as well. Yeah. And I think there are extenuating circumstances in with, with this guy. There, there could be. I mean, there was with the last guy. Yeah. And there probably is with this guy. Yeah. So if if the powers that be happen to listen to this show, don't get mad. That's first. Don't come find us, please. Right. Don't don't Vince Foster us. Yes. Um, Just think about that. Do what's best for the majority of this country, which is the 42% that don't identify with either party and just want you to get stuff done. Yeah. That's all we're saying. Well, hopefully you like this podcast. Please share it with a friend. That's our one thing we're going to ask for you this week. Please share it with a friend. We asked you last week. We're asking you this week. Uh, protect yourself online, private internet access. I forgot to mention in the beginning. Go to dumbideapodcast.com. Click on the link there. Get yourself a VPN, $2.50 a month. Probably less. I think it's actually $1.75 because they give you an extra three months for free when you tech on a large three-year plan. Uh, really inexpensive. Protect yourself online. Protect your credit card info when you're doing all your online shopping like I like to do. And we will see you next time. <laughs>